Tonight, ladies and gentlemen, Waco High School will be honoring a special group of lions. We are recognizing the seniors who will be performing on the Waco ISD turf for the last time. Starting with the football, number two, Micah Moore. Escorted by Mr. Mrs. B. Moore and Michael Taylor. Number four, Tyler Black. Escorted by Jay and Donna Black. Number 12, Thomas Chandler. Escorted by Maria and Thomas Chandler. Number 15, Chris Dowdy. Escorted by Janice Tinsley and Larry Tinsley. Number 18, Timothy Standifer. Escorted by Latrice Burton. Number 21, Angel Campos. Escorted by Jennifer Campos and Destiny Gonzalez. Number 27, Jalen Norwood Sanders. Escorted by Kamara Norwood and Courtney Sanders. Number 31, Terrence Johnson. Escorted by Gail Franklin and Frederick Jackson. Number 39, Octavius Andrews. Escorted by Maritha Hampton. Number 44, Darren Paul, escorted by Lakeish Allen and Darren Paul Sr. Number 45, Darren Bible, escorted by Nyla and Daltrell Bible. Number 52, Luke Grant, escorted by Jonathan and Jennifer Grant. Number 54, Isaac Rivera, escorted by Jeanette Greta and Marco Mendoza. Number 64, Rashawn Connor, escorted by Melinda Thornton. Number 90, Ivan Diaz, escorted by Ann Fuentes and Ricky Fuentes. And now your trainers, Madison Stimson, escorted by Duriel and Stephanie Stimson. Neva Taylor, escorted by Michelle and Fernando Montes Quitoa. Leslie Olguin, escorted by Rolando and Sandra Olguin. And now your cheerleaders, Amaya Gomez, escorted by Adriana and James Cruz. Mia Batista, escorted by Crystal Batista and Alex Cruz. Larissa Rodriguez, escorted by Elena Rodriguez and Samuel Adams. Ariel Munoz, escorted by Belinda Munoz and Gilbert Alvarado. Kimberlyn Johnson, escorted by Francesca Warbe. Arissa Garcia, escorted by Carol Ancelette and Jason Cruz. Congratulations to all of these seniors. Give these seniors a hand. Last time on the Waco ISD football stadium. Congratulations, seniors. Hello, football fans, and welcome to Waco ISD Stadium for another exciting night of Texas high school football. Tonight, the Waco Lions host the Cleburne Yellow Jackets. I'm Lark Smith, along with Hal Harris and our crew from Leaping Lions Productions to bring you this play-by-play -play story between a couple of teams, Hal, that tonight are trying to stay out of the district cellar. That's correct, Clark. You know, if you take a look in the mirror, both these teams look very similar, both on offense and defense. Uh, they're both winless in district play. The winner tonight will stay out of the cellar for sure. You know, each team is struggling uh, on offense to score a lot of points. And on defense, they had great difficulty holding their opponents down. You know, for Cleburne, they're averaging 11 points a game, 134 yards on the ground, and another 150 in the air. But they like to run the football around 62% of the time, and they'll average just over four yards a carry. Uh, because they're limited in how many players they have tonight, they're only shooting up 30 Cleburne. They're going to have to use multiple players to play on both sides of the football of the ball. Uh, Waco High is coming off a bye week. Give them a chance to uh, heal up. they got a couple starters coming back on defense. And we'll get back to the rest of this in just a second. Yeah, the Waco High Junior ROTC is presenting the colors at midfield. So let's join our stadium announcer, George Snookhouse. He can have as an honor unit with distinction. 
The unit mission is to motivate young people to become better citizens. The colors are being presented by the Waco High Junior ROTC Color Guard consisting of Right Guard, Cadet Private Eric Palacios, America Flag, Cadet Captain Ariana Melendez, Texas Flag, Cadet Sergeant First Class Denise Palacios, United States Army Flag, Cadet First Class Yesenia Antonio, Waco High Junior ROTC Battalion Flag, Cadet Captain Ashy Stevens, Left Guard, Cadet Sergeant, First Class, Saul Lars. We ask that both teams and fans place the colors on the field during the playing of our national anthem. This time, Waco High School Band will play the national anthem. officials for tonight those officials out of the Waco chapter the referee tonight is Brad Strickland the umpire is Scott Hamby the head linesman is Rhett Williams the line judge Eric Reinhardt field judge is Bill Lawrence the side judge is Joel Wymore and the back judge is Brian Thomas a full complement of seven officials for tonight's game captains meeting at midfield for Waco High include number four, Tyler Black, number 90, Ivan Diaz, number 44, Darren Paul, and number 50, 52, Luke Grant. The captains Waco for High the Cleveland Yellow Jackets, number four, Will Sledge. I'm sorry, that's number 24. That is Chris Meyer, number 28, Alejandro Hurtado. And they got that over with pretty quick, Hal. Yeah, look, uh, Waco won the toss. They, they deferred to the second half. Now these are two teams, again, that are looking for their first district win. Waco High is 1-7 on the year. They had their one win in non-district play against W.T. White. Cleveland, though, comes in 0-9 on the year, 0-7 in league play. This is their final game of the district schedule, their final game of the season as they have the open date in the district schedule next week. So as we said, this is a battle to stay out of the cellar in the district standings. Cleveland Yellow Jackets are under first year head coach Jim Woodard. It is his first year as a head coach. He took over for Casey Walraven, who was the coach at Cleveland for the last five years. Walraven, after a successful turn at Grandview with a couple of state championships with the Zebras went to Cleveland. Did not have such a great time in Cleveland in his five years as the Yellow Jackets were at 19 and 30 in his time there. And he has moved on to Alvarado, which is his hometown, just about 20 miles up 67 from Cleveland. So Jim Werdard getting his first opportunity to coach a Texas high school football team. Tyler Black getting ready to kick the ball off for Waco High. 
James Reynolds, number 20, will, on the far side for Cleburne. Malachi Cunningham on the near side, number 10. Here's the approach. Kick toward the far side. Taken at the 21-yard line by one of the up men. And he'll be carried out of bounds at about the 29-yard line. That was Creed Martinick. Creed Martinick with the carry. Got him up to the 29, so Cleveland will start off with a football first and 10. Alex Gonzalez, number 40 for Waco High, shoving him out of bounds on that kickoff. We expect both of these teams to have run-heavy offenses. Cleveland's already got its offense out there on the field, waiting for the Waco High defense to come aboard. 67 degrees as we start play here this evening under a mostly cloudy sky. It's been drizzling for most of the pregame, but looks like it's cleared off now. No drizzle to be seen after about an inch of rain in Waco today. We do have a north-northeast wind at about 10 miles per hour. Pass in the flat, complete to Cunningham. Cunningham runs into one of his own men, and he'll only get a yard, maybe to the 30-yard line before. LZ Amos yep. in on the tackle there. Getting the yard to the 30. Or actually, looks like they started the sticks at the 30-yard line, so no gain on the play. Second down and six. Second down and 10, pardon me. And we have an injury already to start with as one of the Yellow Jackets being looked at on the near sideline, and here comes the entire managing crew for the Cleveland Yellow Jackets to check on the injured player. As we're waiting for the uh, injured player to be attended to, let's take a look at Waco's defense tonight. Uh, in the defensive line, you're going to have it nose guard Ivan Diaz, number 90. Javon Bryant, number 88, will be at the left end position. And Micah Moore, back from being out a couple games due to injury, he'll be at the right end position. The linebackers will be number 18, Tim Standifer, along with number 20, O'Shawn Neal. And the inside linebackers will be number 6, LZ Amos, and number 44, Darren Paul. In the secondary, the cornerbacks will be number 8, Tyrone Sumter, along with number 10, Amias Irwin, and then at safety, uh, true freshman, Rashad Lee, number 12, getting his first start of the year, along with his other safety cohort, Isaiah Levingstone. The injured player was the receiver, Malachi Cunningham. That's going to be a big loss for the Yellow Jackets if he's not able to return to the game. Taking his spot is Creed Martinick. Handoff goes up the middle. That's Wells with the carry. Micah Moore on the tackle there after short game. Getting three yards up to the 33, where it's going to be third down and seven. Quarterback tonight for the Yellow Jackets is number three. Landry Shields, we had a question as to whether it'd be Shields or Stroyer starting, but Shields gets the start at the quarterback spot. Once again, hands off and a loss, well, maybe a gain of one on the play by Wells. Tim Standiff for knocking him down at the legs, number 18 for Waco High. Get it up to the 34 yard line. where it's going to be a punt situation. Reggie Lewis already deep, waiting for the punt, waiting a little bit further back as the wind's blowing from left to right on your television screen. He expects the wind to carry the football a little bit. Evan Melton. Bad snap to the punter, but he's able to get it off with a rugby-style punt. He gets a decent roll out of it. He will get a decent roll out of it and go inside the 20 down to the 19-yard line. So nine minutes and 52 seconds left to go in the first quarter, and that's when Waco High gets the ball for the first time as Cleveland held on to it for two minutes and eight seconds. That was 47 yards on the punt by Evan Melton for Cleveland. 
Here comes the Waco High offense, led by Reggie Lewis at quarterback. He'll have LZ Amos in the backfield with him and four receivers to choose from. And Chris Dowdy, Dwayne Simmons, King Townsend, and Robert Wireman. They're working behind the offensive line of Luke Grant at center. The guards are DeAndre Smith and Kelvin Young. The tackles Dante Ward and Rayshon Connor. Handoff goes to Amos over the right side. Gets it up to about the 33-yard line. They make that the 23-yard line for a game of four on the play. Like I said, uh, in the pregame, we expect both these teams to be fairly run-heavy tonight. Neither team shows a lot of passing in their statistics so far this year. Both of them have had some injury problems at quarterback. Waco High down to their fourth quarterback of the year with Reggie Lewis under center. Turns and hands the ball off to Amos. He runs into the line and will get a yard maybe to the 24-yard line, and that's it. Stacked up and brought down by Chris Mayer, number 24 for Cleburne. Yeah, both teams definitely feel uh, more comfortable running the football than passing it. So the Lions face a third down and five at their own 24-yard line. Looking to the sideline for the call from the offensive coordinators. There's just five seconds left on the play clock. They need to hurry, and now Lyndon Helt's going to call a timeout as he saw the play clock running down on his ball club. You know, in talking to Coach Helt, Lark, uh, while we have a timeout, he was he was talking about tonight's ball game. He said he was really looking for his team and needed to start out fast and try to create a few off, uh, explosive plays on offense, something they've been lacking this year, uh, something that might help produce some long, sustained drives that chew up a lot of the clock. Uh, he wants them to eliminate, you know, some of the mental mistakes they've been having and play sound defense. So we'll see what happens as he's got a couple different – he's got two different uh, – players uh, in the receiver position tonight. And, you know, field position is going to be critical the whole night. So here's the Lions up to the line of scrimmage, third down and five. Lewis looking to pass. Now will tuck it and run. Gets a block on the edge from Amos. Has the first down. And Jukes won. Yellow Jacket gets it up to the 42-yard line in the first down for Waco High. That's just Reggie Lewis doing what Reggie Lewis can do. Excellent block by LZ Amos clearing that hole right around the corner there. Logan Schroer, number two, with the safety in on the tackle for Cleburne. Lewis picked up 13 on the play to the 37-yard line. First and 10, little problem in the backfield, and Lewis unable to get around the corner. Will lose a yard back, make a couple of yards back to the 34. Chris Mayard, number 24, their linebacker with the tackle. Loss of three on the play. Brings up second down and 13. And off goes to Amos. As he is knocked back when he gets close to the 35, they're going to mark him at the 34 for no gain on the play. Chris Mayer, 24 in on the tackle again. Luke Grant, the center, is a little gimped up there. It looks like on the ankle he may have gotten caught up in the uh, pile there. It's third and long. Normally a passing down, but again, neither one of these teams care to pass much. And go out. Of Lewis rolling to his left. That's not the side he needs to be rolling to if he's throwing the ball. Now he's back to his right side. If he can juke this way, he throws the ball and it's complete. Out to King Townsend, and Townsend will have the first down. A nice job by Townsend to come back and help his quarterback. 
the cornerback who was covering Townsend decided to come up to try to get Reggie, and when he did, he left him wide open. If he could have kept his feet balanced, he might have gone the whole way. Picked up 14 on the play, and another first down. So Lewis good for 14 on his first pass of the night. From under center, Reggie turns and hands the ball off to Amos. He gets around the corner and takes the ball up to about the 46-yard line we in got, Cleburne territory. We've got a couple flags there. That's probably going to be holding on the offensive line. Brad Strickland indicates it is holding against Waco High, so scratch that gain by Amos. And the first penalty of the night goes against Waco High for 10 yards. Penalties are what are not what this offense needs to have happen to them yeah, on the offensive, offensive side neither. of the ball. The first down and 20, back to the Waco 38. From out of the shotgun now. The handoff goes to Amos. Slides a couple of would-be tacklers at the line of scrimmage and gets it up to the 43-yard line. Chris Mayer on the tackle. He's all over the place tonight, number 24 for Cleveland. Pick up a five on the play for LZ Amos. He's another player that's kind of been forced into a position that he wasn't starting at it. He was mostly starting on the defense, but they needed his talent on the offensive side. He has the football once again. And we'll get it up to the 44-yard line for just a gain of one. Yeah, the best laid plans of mice and men go awry, especially when you have injuries, and that's been the case for Lyndon Help this year. He's had to take some of his better athletes that he'd like to have on defense and move them over to the offensive side. Reggie Lewis probably should be playing defensive back as well as a wide receiver, but he's been forced to become their quarterback. Amos should be one of their linebackers. But he's been forced to play running back as well. Reggie is rolling to his right, looks to throw, has a man, but it's a little bit underthrown and tipped away. Trying to get that out to Chris Dowdy. Pass intended for number 15. Dowdy falls incomplete, brings up fourth down. So they get a couple of first downs, but face a punting situation here. Tyler Black in to do the punting. James Reynolds back for Cleburne at the High 20. High snap, but he's able to bring it down. Going to get a bounce and a good Waco roll down to the 20-yard line where he's killed there. So a nice punt from Tyler Black. Four minutes and 23 seconds left to go in the first quarter, and we're scoreless after each team has had the ball one time. Tyler Black with a 34-yard uh, punt there. Good job by the Waco def or offense, though, to hold on the ball for five minutes and 29 seconds. And eat up some clock here in the first quarter. Cleveland gets the ball for the, first, for the second time now. And for the second time, they're going to start at their own 20-yard line. Pass is complete. Well, they dropped the ball. It was complete to Schroyer, but Schroyer unable to hold on to it. Myas Irwin defending on the play. He's up second down and 10. We've got Darren Bible in at left defensive end in this second series for Waco. Handoff goes to Wells, and Wells is stacked up after he gets up to about the 23-yard line. Darren Paul wrapped him up immediately. And Give him a gain of three on the play. He's going to bring up third down and seven at the 23.
Most likely a passing down here for the Yellow Jackets. Wide receiver on the far side is James Reynolds. We've also got JV and Moore, number 19, in at one of the uh, outside linebacker positions. Have not seen Malachi Cunningham come back into the game after he was injured on that first pass play. From under duress, he has to throw to Wells in the flat, and Wells is unable to get to it. Darren Bible was putting a lot of pressure on the quarterback, probably made him dump it off too quick, forcing to a fourth down and punting situation. And once again, the Waco High defense does its job and forces a three and out. Reggie Lewis back deep for Waco High at his 40-yard line. Did Reggie drive the bus over here too? He's being used in multiple ways tonight. Low snap gets by the punter. He's just going to have to follow it on a four-yard line, and Waco High is going to have the football at point-blank range thanks to a bad punt snap. Golden opportunity here for Waco High to take it in from the four-yard line and take an early lead here. Turnovers are going to be critical tonight as these teams are evenly matched, and uh, you have to have zero turnovers to probably come out and win this game tonight. And Waco High with a really good opportunity here. Looking for LZ Amos to get the football and punch this one in from the four. It's going to be Reggie Lewis trying to get around the right side. There is a yellow hanky on the field, so we'll find out. Looks like there was uh, maybe illegal participation on the part of Cleburne. We'll see what Brad Strickland says. He just calls it offside, offside. against the defense. Well, that's a half the distance to the goal. Brings up first and goal now from the two. First penalty against the Yellow Jackets goes for a whopping two yards. Correction. Defensive end number 91, Tabor Sanchez, was offside on that last play. So it's first down. And off goes to a running back that Mason Smith yeah, welcome. Mason Smith welcome. And he is in the end zone for the touchdown. Two play drive ends in the touchdown, and Waco High is up on top early in the uh, late in the first quarter. Touchdown, Wyatt. Tyler Black will come on to try the point after. Kick is up, and it is blocked. Reggie was able to pick it up, couldn't get anywhere with it, so point after attempt, no good. So with three minutes and two seconds left to go, pardon me, first quarter, Waco High has a 6-0 lead. Well, Waco High took advantage of that uh, messed up punt and where the snap, you know, two bouncer back to the to the punter and he couldn't handle it and Waco High made them pay for that mistake. One turnover for Cleveland, zero for Waco High and Waco High leads six to nothing here late in the first quarter. After the turnover, Waco High only needed 19 seconds to get on the scoreboard. So the turnover pays dividends for the Waco Lions. James Reynolds back along with Malachi Cunningham at their 10 yard line to receive this kick from Waco's Tyler Black. Black kicking into the teeth of about a 10 to 15 mile an hour wind. Last time he popped it up to the far side of the field. Shows an onside kick situation here, and it's covered by Cleburne. There to cover it up was Marcus Juarez for the Yellow Jackets. 
Went and helped pull a little trick out of the bag of tricks here with the onside try, but Juarez was able to take care of it. And apparently there was a penalty at the end of it against Waco High. So they'll start off in Waco territory at the line 42 yard line. Big ask here of the Waco defense to hold them here on this uh, third series. Shields at the quarterback spot on the option, pitches it to Wells. Wells will have nowhere to go. They close the door on him in a hurry, and he's going to lose two yards. LZ Amos wrapped him up and put him right down to the turf. Well defended play by Waco High. They'll mark it at the 43, he leaves him just a yard on the play. Bring up second down and 11. Shields looking to throw to the right on the square out is complete and out of bounds with the football is Malachi Cunningham who's back in the game. Myers Irwin in on the defense for Waco High. Picks up the first first down of the night for the Yellow Jackets at the 30-yard line, a gain of 13 on the play. The first and 10. Wells takes the handoff going left, and he's hit as soon as he gets to the 29-yard line. But Diaz leading the way. Look like Micah Moore was in on the tackle there, number two. Stood him, up, under. stood him up immediately though. Well executed tackle there. Clock under two minutes to go here in the first quarter. Second down and nine from the Waco 29. Lone receiver to the right, a high snap brought down by Shields. He hands it to Wells, and Wells will get another one yard on the play, and that's all. Darren Paul wrapping him up immediately right there at the uh, point of contact, one yard, one yard gain. Wells has carried the ball six times for a grand total of 10 yards so far. That Waco defense doing its job, stopping the running game of the Yellow Jackets. He faces third down and eight here. Two receivers left, one to the right. Shields now double checks with the sideline as to what play the coaching staff wants to run, and they're going to call a timeout with 55 seconds left to go in the first quarter. Now we had a bottle of champagne. I always see some bubbles coming up in front of our position here in the press box. Oh, we have a young fan down there on, on the front row, two of them. They've got their bubble, whatever that it used to be called when you and I were young. Yeah. It's right down there on the 50-yard line. And it's blowing all the way up here. Waco High with the 6-0 lead, taking advantage of the only turnover so far in the game. Cleveland Yellow Jackets have been playing football since 1903 at that school. Come in with an all-time record of 628 wins against 498 losses. There was 43 ties along the way before the UIL decided to use the tiebreaker instead of penetrations to decide games. Third and eight. Shields looking left, throws off his back foot. And it's knocked away as LZ Amos gets there to knock it away at the goal line. Intended on the far side. He will bring up a fourth down. Not sure, I believe that was maybe uh, Logan Schroyer that was we've intended got, for. We've got a couple of Waco High defenders down. They probably collided into each other on that pass attempt. 
O'Shawn Neal, number 20 for Wake, Ohio, was putting great pressure on the uh, quarterback for Cleburne. Well, most likely it's four down territory for Cleburne here. Yeah, both of the Waco defenders are down. One of those was Amos, and the other one was Rashad Lee. Well, they're being looked at by the Waco High training staff. Lee, a very promising freshman, getting his first start of the year for Waco High. Let's hope they just had the wind knocked out of them when they hit the turf. Lee is up and walking back to the near sideline on his own power, but they're still taking a look at LZ Amos. With a nine-team district, both of these teams only had two non-district games to play before district schedule got underway. Waco High won one of those two after losing to Fort Worth Southwest 20-6. They beat... Dallas W.T. White here at Waco ISD Stadium, 45 to 27. The Cleveland Yellow Jackets started off with Houston Heights and lost 54 to 20 and then took on Middle Othian Heritage, a playoff team from a year ago, and got shut out 64 to nothing. LZ Amos also walking back to the near sideline on his own power. That's good to see. That is not a player that Lyndon Health needs to be without tonight. Yeah, he's got a slight length, but he is a tough kid, about 6'2", 215 pounds. Yellow Jackets appear to be lined up for a 40-yard field goal attempt. They're a field goal kicker's number 12. That's Anthony Taranzi. Taranis. So Taranis, this is actually from... 45 yards, but the snap is fumbled and falling on the ball is the holder, Logan Schroyer. And so once again in the kicking game, the Yellow Jackets are unable to execute, and Waco High going to be able to get the ball on downs now on the turnover. Excellent field position here for Waco High as they start their third position of the uh, evening. They get and the yes, ball. the kicking game is really hurting Cleburne so far. They get the ball with just 44 seconds left, and they'll start from their own 33-yard line. Mason Smith, welcome, takes the handoff, gets it up to the 43. Tabor Sanchez, number 91, bringing him down on the tackle. Actually, he's the 38-yard line, so that's a gain of five on the play for Mason Smith. Welcome. Second down and five. Once again, the fake the handoff. Lewis looking for some running room. We'll dive it up across to the, about the 45-yard line for a gain of two. Ray Quellyar, number 66 in on the tackle. That was a really good fake there. Faked me out too, I thought. <laughs> Mason Smith, welcome, had, had the ball. And of course, Mason's in right now because uh, LZ Amos is on the sideline resting right now. It's going to be the end of our first quarter, and our score is Waco 6 and Cleaver nothing. We want to take a moment to highlight our seniors on the Leaping Lions production crew. All the students on the crew work really hard to video these games for your enjoyment, but we want to give some special thanks to our seniors, America Archon and Brianna Acevedo. Thank you, ladies, for the hard work that you do. And hope you have great success beyond your senior year in high school.
Reggie Lewis is free down the far sideline, gets a block from Chris Dowdy, breaks it back inside, picks up some more blocks, and finally dragged down from behind when he gets up to about the 20-yard line. That's a vintage Reggie Lewis run. Chris Mayer, number 24, finally wrestling him down at the 20-yard line after that large game. Picked up about 40 yards and a first down. And back to the line of scrimmage. And now we get a timeout, official timeout for. It's number 57, uh, Elton injury, Reeves. Yeah. Elton Reeves uh, down on the ground for Cleburne at the 30-yard line. Well, Coach Helt was looking for an explosive play, and he just got one out of Reggie Lewis. Certainly did. Again, Reggie has not necessarily been the quarterback. This is the fourth game in which he's had to operate in the backfield. He's carried the ball coming into tonight's game just 19 times, but 130 yards on those 19 carries. So when he does carry the football, it's very effective. So first and 10 from the 20, a low snap, but it's taken by Lewis and given off to Smith Welcome, who takes it up to the 15-yard line before he's busted down to the ground. Linebacker number 24, Chris Meyer, again in on the tackle. He's been on this about every tackle of all the play so far. Brings up second down and five. Waco High looking for their second score of the night. They send two wide receivers to the left. Two on the right. They send the flanker in motion. That's Dowdy, and Dowdy will able to get the ball. Excuse me, that's Dwayne Simmons with the football. Got a flag down there on the field, number 20. James Reynolds was in on that tackle. Well, the holding call was going to pull that one back. That's the second time that the... Lions have been called for holding in their third penalty of the night for 25 yards. That'll take it back to the 25-yard line. It'll be second down and 15. Ten forty-five and counting left to go in the first half. Wake Ohio on top, 6-0. Make the handoff, Lewis rolling to his left, looking to pass under pressure, will be caught from behind. And will lose a yard or two. Marcus Juarez was putting great pressure on Reggie, number 23 for Cleburne. Losses back to the 28 yard line. A loss of three on the play. Brings up third and 18. Joseph Bedford has come in for Waco at the running back position. We're going to have Bedford and Smith welcome in the backfield. Get the playoff. Lewis once again rolling left, looks to throw up field. Throws it into a crowd, trying to get it to Wireman, and it's intercepted at the five yard line. And the 20. It works about the same as the punt. Yeah, James Reynolds. He got away with a little holding of the wide receiver, though, down on that 10-yard line. The referee just didn't see it. Michael High held on the ball for 252 before they gave it up on the turnover on the interception. Like I say, it works pretty much as a punt as the ball is at the Cleburne five-yard line. Handoff goes to Wells, and he'll get a couple of yards up to the seven, but that's all. He ran right into Darren Bible, number 45, who put him right down to the turf. 
defensive line for Waco's Ivan Diaz, Javon Bryan, and Darren Bible. Linebackers are 18, Tim Stanifer, number 19, Javion Moore. LZ Amos is not in the game at this moment. Darren Paul, number 44, and O'Shawn Neal, number 20. Send a man in motion. Shields looking to pass, throws across the middle, and it's knocked away. Good defensive play there by, by Waco High's Isaiah I, Livingston. Yeah, he was right there with him, Lark. Really good coverage there by the safety. Third and eight. Third and eight. At the Cleveland seven. Because Rashad Lee got banged up on that last defensive hit series, Tyrone Sumter has been added in as one of the uh, corners. Two receivers to the left side. They'll send a, a fumble on fumble. the play, and I believe Waco High has the ball. Sure enough. The quarterback unable to handle the snap and jumping on the football for Waco High is Darren Bible. Huge turnover by Cleburne there. Now Waco High has a golden chance here to punch it in and take a 12 to nothing lead with an extra point to go or a two point conversion. So once again, Waco High gets the ball deep in Cleburne territory on the turnover, this time at the three yard line. Okay, LZ Amos is coming back on uh, to be a running back, Lark. Apparently a procedure call against Waco High at the snap. That'll move them back five. Got a little anxious to get that play off. Well, we had a couple different guys in there. Ivan Diaz and number 44. Darren Paul were brought in. They're both coming off now. So they were trying some kind of razzle-dazzle play, but uh, it backfired on them. Well, it moves it back to the eight. Townsend comes wide to the near side. Under center goes Lewis. He'll turn and hand the ball off to Amos. Amos is around the right end, and he's into the end zone from eight yards out for the touchdown. Some really good blocking on the right side of that offensive line, making that an easy run for LZ Amos in the touchdown. Waco High has turned two Cleburne turnovers deep in Cleburne territory and the touchdowns. They had the first PAT block, so quite possibly they'll go for two here with 8.57 left to go in the second quarter. Reggie Lewis will take it in for the two. Got another flag down on the six yard line. Holding against Waco High, we're going to have to try it again. That's five penalties so far. It's way too many for Waco High. They're going to send Tyler Black in to kick the extra point now, Lark. Yeah, the holding penalty will move it back to like the 12 or 13 yard line. Well, it's a better opportunity here with Reggie Lewis as his holder. Wind is at his back. It's an easy distance for Tyler Black, what we've seen. As long as he doesn't get it blocked, and this one goes straight through the pipes. Good for the point after. So with 8.57 left to go in the first half, Waco High increases its lead to 13 to nothing over the Cleburne Yellow Jackets. Well, Waco High definitely has taken advantage of two big mistakes by Cleburne and has punched in from four yards, four yard drive and a three yard drive. And so they've got a lead of 13 to nothing. It's pretty easy to score when you don't even have to get a first down to get into the end zone. Yeah, those drives 
took 19 seconds and six seconds on that last drive. Well, the Lions have done the job of taking advantage of what the Yellow Jackets have handed to them. Now it's just a matter of taking care of business for the next 8.57 here in the first quarter. Now the last time Waco High kicked off, Tyler Black tried an onside kick, which gave Cleburne some fairly good field position, but the Yellow Jackets were not able to take advantage of that. Malachi Cunningham and James Reynolds will be deep for Cleburne at their own 10-yard line. Yellow Jacket offense has only managed one first down so far. Ball is kicked deep all the way to the one-yard line. Bring it out is Reynolds. He'll sidestep one would-be tackler, but then the rest of the posse gets there and holds him short of the 20. Javon Bryant, 88, knocking him down there. Yeah, every time you take a kickoff and you finally stop on your motion, party's, party's over for you. Yeah. Yeah, you can't let the ball hit the ground. You can't stop your momentum. You can change direction, but you just can't stop your momentum. Once you start backpedaling, the posse will catch up to you. From the 19-yard line. Cleveland quarterback is Landry Shields, a senior, 6'1", 205. Defensively, we've got Rashad Lee back in the game, number 12 for Waco at the safety position. Jajin Wells, junior running back in the backfield with him, fakes the handoff, Shields throws across the middle, and it's incomplete. Led his potential target, Cunningham, a little too far. Isaiah Levingstone in on the defense. That ball was thrown right down at his feet. It would have been a really tough catch, even if he had dove for it. Shields is just two of 11. I make that two of seven for 13 yards so far here in the first half. Handoff goes to Wells, bumps it back out to the left side. He'll get all about three yards up to the 22 yard line. Tim Standifer for wrapping him up. That's the eighth carry for Wells on the night for just 15 yards. Waco High doing a outstanding job of containing this offense so far tonight. Third down and seven from the Cleburne 22. Looking for their second first down of the game. Looked left, throws right, has a man, and just off the fingertips of his intended target. Trying to get that out to Logan Schroyer. Tyrone Sumter. Defending on the pass. Reggie Lewis deep for Waco High sitting at his 45 yard line. Cleburne's offense has run 18 offensive plays and has a grand total of 14 yards. It's tough to score when you only have 14 yards on 18 attempts. It's the punt away, it's a low liner. Got a flag down there. Lewis is gonna let it bounce. And we'll see what the meaning of the flag is. Veteran official Brad Strickland, our referee tonight talking with our umpire this evening, Scott Hamby about the penalty. It's going to be a holding penalty against the Yellow Jackets. It'll be half the distance to the gold, and the Jackets are going to have to re-kick. I'd have them re-kick, too, as much trouble as they've had on the punting tonight. So if it's half the distance, then they'll put it at the 11-yard line. That's a little bit more than the 10 yards it would normally be. Okay, Reggie Lewis now setting up on the 45-yard line at Cleburne. Actually put it at the 12. So they mark off the 10 yards. He snapped it over his head. 
over his head and out of the end zone. That's two points for Waco High. Punting game continues to create havoc for Cleburne tonight. So that ups the score to 15 to nothing in favor of Waco High. And the Lions are being gifted points this evening. They sure are. Safety and they're going to get the ball right now. Two punt attempts that went south, along with a field goal that never got off the ground. So kicking game has uh, been a disaster tonight for Cleburne. Again, 18 plays run by Cleveland for just 14 yards of total offense. Waco High has run 14 plays for every 87 yards of total offense. And Waco High about to get the ball again with 743. Make that 748 left to go. Reggie Lewis, number one. Angel Campos, number 21, are back deep for Waco High. This Cleveland will be kicking from their 20-yard line after the safety. Waco's going to end up with really good field position here. Get the kick away. Backpedaling to the 34. That's Angel Campos. Good return, though. Gets it back into Cleburne territory. Nice return by Campos. Up to the 45 in the Yellow Jackets into the field. This will be the third time in five possessions that Waco High started inside the 50-yard line. Good look at some of the cheer squad for the Waco Lions. Reggie Lewis going to see if he can engineer a time-consuming drive here that ends up in the end zone and gives the Lions a, a lead at halftime. Play clock has not started yet. As the defense gets on the field, the Waco High offense breaks its huddle. Lewis will go under center, taking the snap from Luke Grant. Handoff goes to Amos, and Amos is dropped at the line of scrimmage. Got wrapped up as soon as he got the football. That's the seventh carry for Amos tonight for 16 yards and a touchdown. Brian Nunez in on the tackle for Cleburne. He's up second down and 10 from the 45. Lewis trying to find the block from Amos, now trying to just get away from the pursuit and won't be able to do so, and he's back to his own 45-yard line for a loss of 10. Number nine, Creed Martinick on the tackle there. Second carry in a row for Lewis that he's lost yardage. After that 40-yard pickup on his second carry, he's lost... 13 yards in his last two. Third down and 20. London Helt and the offensive crew looking for that third down and 20 play that they have in the playbook. It's going to be Reggie Lewis run straight up the middle. Stayed, stayed on his feet momentarily. Not sure why they're letting him drop on his on him after he's down, but his forward progress is going to be up to the 49-yard line. He picked up four on the play. Number 11, Brian Nunes with the tackle on Lewis. Well, it's going to be punt time for Tyler Black. They'll send Malachi Cunningham deep to receive the punt. Again, a win at Black's back. It's a low snap, but able to handle it. A low liner knuckleball that's going to land at the 15 and roll and check up just inside the 10-yard line at the 9. Excellent punt, 40 yards. Puts Cleveland deep in their own end of the field here. 
5.31 to go in the second quarter. Cleveland, how many times they started inside their 10? Four times, three yes. times? Pretty much. At 91 yards to go with five and a half minutes to play in this second quarter. Hand off to Wells, trying to get around the right side. Going to be cut off at the pass. Nice 80, job by... 88 was in on that tackle. Now Livingstone was the first guy to turn him inside. Yvonne Bryant. No gain on the play for Wells. Waco High has been very stingy on defense in this first half. Shields rolling left, looking to throw. Scares his shoulder, throws upfield, and it is a diving try to get the ball to Malachi Cunningham, but it's incomplete. Excellent coverage by the safety, Isaiah Levingstone. He was right there on that receiver. Nice job. Fifth consecutive incompletion for Landry Shields. Facing a third down and 10 at his own nine yard line. Play clock is at 10 as they look to the sideline for the play. And I got a feeling that Cleveland's about to call the timeout. They don't. They're going to get a delay a game penalty, and sure enough, well, they didn't throw the flag. They just handed off to Wells, and Wells dives up to about the 13, and that's all that was there. Javion Moore, 19, along with Darren Paul. Another excellent defensive series by Waco High. Reggie Lewis is back at the 40-yard line of Cleburne for this, for this punt. Another three and out for the Waco defense. They've had trouble with the punt snap tonight. This one is back to the punter in an okay fashion. He's run into, but no flags thrown. But the punt is way out of bounds on the far side and very short, somewhere inside the 25-yard line at the 24. So Waco High once again going to get great field position in Cleveland territory. That was an 11-yard punt. Didn't even punt for a first down, did he? Another great starting position for Waco High offense on the 24-yard line of Cleburne. Fourth time they've been inside the 50-yard line here in the first half. And from the 24-yard line, first and 10, Lewis hands the ball off to Smith. Welcome. And he'll be stopped immediately for a loss of two. Reynolds and Sanchez in on the tackle for Cleburne. Third carry of the night for Mason Smith. Welcome for a grand total of five yards. Waco High now has rushed the ball 15 times for 62 yards, just one of three passing for 14. One of those was intercepted. Mason Smith welcome once again with the football, gets it up to the 22-yard line. A gain of four on the play. Xavier Aguilar, defensive end for Cleburne on the tackle number 34. At least they're back between the sticks, facing a third down and eight. Clock rolling under three minutes to go here in the first half. Waco with a 15 to nothing lead on the Cleburne Yellow Jackets. Wireman, the solo receiver to the far side in the slot is Amos. Empty backfield for Reggie Lewis. He sees some running room and jukes his way up to the 20 yard line just to pick up a two on the play for Reggie Lewis. 11, Brian Nunez again on the tackle. 
Reggie had LZ Amos open there about seven yards right down the seam if he'd been able to see him. Looks like they're going to try a field goal, Lark. They bring out Tyler Black, setting up for a 37-yard field goal attempt. Once again, it's within Black's distance. This one, though, is no good. Off kind of a line, right. yeah, kind of a line drive shot. I was trying to see if it was going to get over the crossbar, but it was off to the right just ever so slightly. He kept that one under the radar, but couldn't quite get it there. So Waco High has turned away with exactly two minutes left to go in the first half. Cleaver going to get the ball at their own 20. Landry Shields has gone the distance at quarterback. High snap, pulls it down, hands it off to Wells, and Wells will get folded up after he gets about a two-yard gain. Micah Moore dragging him down from behind on the tackle. Wells, 11th carry of the game for 21 yards. Second down and eight. Two receivers to the right. One to the near side. H-back goes in motion from left to right. Straight drop back for Shields looking down the far sideline and once again, just a little bit too far for a streaking receiver down the far sideline. Once again, trying to get that destroyer. Rashad Lee defending for Waco. That's two times they've actually uh, beat the Waco defense, but just could not quite execute the pass. And that's a long pass. We're talking a 30-yard pass there. And yeah, they're 2 of 10 in the passing department for 13 total yards. The third and eight at the 22. Now they're going to change the play with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Game clock stopped at 118 after the incompletion. Again, straight drop back off the back foot, throws deep, and it's going to be underthrown a little bit. Stroyer, though, had a chance to bring it down but could not come up with it. Rashad Lee. Down. And LZ Amos defending on that play. Now, to say the least, if you force Cleburne into a passing situation, it's going to be tough for them to execute it. Now, just two for 11 for 13 yards. They've run 24 plays for a grand total of 20 yards here in this first half. Waco High is really getting after them on defense tonight. Reggie Lewis back at his 50 yard line to take this punt from Cleburne. Evan Melton gets it away, goes to the far side of the field, and will take a yellow jacket roll to the 41-yard line. And that's where Waco High will get the ball with just 56 seconds left to go in the first half. 37-yard punt there by Melton. Sets up Waco with the ball at the 42-yard line of Waco with 56 seconds to go. Cleveland's longest time of possession in this game has been two minutes and eight seconds. Waco High from their own 42. And now a flag thrown. And that usually means something procedure-wise against Waco High. Those are the kind of penalties that will upset Coach Helt. Those are mental mistakes. Yeah, that'll bring a little uh, little discussion during the video session tomorrow in, in the field house. Takes it back to the 37, tries to get it out to Dowdy or 
Actually, that's number 16, Simmons, that he tried to get it to, but incomplete. Yeah, Dwayne Simmons getting his first start of the year for Wake, Ohio, along with uh, King Townsend, number 25, I believe, is getting a second start. So got a couple young guys uh, finally getting some playing time here in the varsity career. Hands it off to the running back, Amos. Or excuse me, that's Smith Welcome. Gets it up to the 39. Nunez in, Nunez in on the tackle number 11. I'm not sure Waco's going to be in any hurry here, Lark, to uh, get up to the line of scrimmage. This may be their last play of the first half. So it's third down and 13. Play clock is at 10. The game clock's at 16, so they do have to run a play. It'll be Reggie Lewis following the block of Smith. Welcome, but the ball gets thrown away. Well, they blow the ball dead at the 30-yard line as the time has expired. So Lewis was down at the 31-yard line. He lost six on the play. And that will do it for our first half of play as the Waco Lions have taken advantage of several miscues in the punting and kicking game for the Cleburne Yellow Jackets and take a 15 to nothing lead to the locker room. Stay tuned. We have our halftime activities coming up right after this. For the safety of the performers, we would like to direct your attention to the right end of the stands, where Waco High School is proud to present the Scarlet Line Drill Team under the direction of Wanda Johnson and LaShonda Gaines. Scarlet Line officers are Captain Demoriana McLennan, Co-Captain Ladario Roberts, First Lieutenant Cassidy Ford, and Second Lieutenant Giselle Talavera. Congratulations to the dancer and spirit members of the week. Tonight, the Scarlet Line will be doing a dance routine to the Lady Gaga hit, Poker Face. School proudly presents the 2022 Lion Pride Marching Band. The 2022 Waco High Band is under the direction of Scott Stewart, Tyler Sage, and Michelle Nelson. In light of tonight's weather, 
We are presenting a special performance we like to call Ponchos, Ponchos, Ponchos. We will begin by featuring the smiling faces of the color guard as they perform a flag routine to the Fits and the Tantrums hand clap. School board members and administration, Superintendent Dr. Susan Kincannon, and Waco High Principal Sterling McGurdle for their continued support of the Fine Arts Program in Waco ISD. Special thanks go out to Fine Arts Director Larry Carpenter and Administrative Assistant slash Queen of Fine Arts Susan Ramone for their continual support of all the Waco ISD Fine Arts. Let's give it up one more time for the 2022 Lion Pride Band. Hope you enjoyed our halftime show. Waco Lions have made it out of the locker room, starting to warm up in the north end zone. So with the Cleveland Yellow Jackets, let's take a look at the first half statistics that are uh, not real. Uh, well, they're not authoritative, let's put it that way. The best that we could do in the first half. Waco High leading 50, or at 15 to nothing at the half. The Lions have only had three first downs to just one for Cleburne. Waco High has run 23 offensive plays for a grand total of 78 yards. Cleburne, 24 offensive plays for 20 yards. On the ground, Waco High with 19 carries for 64 yards. Cleburne, 13 carries for just seven yards. In the passing department, Waco is one of four for 14 yards. Cleburne, two of 11 for 13 yards. Cleburne has fumbled the ball once and lost it. Waco High has turned the ball over once on a interception. But the real difference in this first half has been in the kicking game where a punch snap went over the head of the putter and went out of the end zone for a two-point safety. And Waco High also got 
very good field position on bad punch snaps inside the five yard line to come up with their two touchdowns on the guys. So uh, penalties have been few and far between. P Waco High penalized four times for 30 yards, Cleburne two times for 12 yards. And time of possession is fairly even. Waco High's had the ball a little longer, 13 minutes and 54 seconds in the first half compared to 12 minutes and six seconds for Cleburne. And the individual department, Reggie Lewis is the leading rusher in the game. 40 yards on seven carries. LZ Amos has carried the ball seven times for 16 yards. Mason Smith welcomed five times for eight yards. Rushing for Cleburne, their leader is Jagan Wells. 11 carries for just 21 yards. Both Jayshon Scales and Logan Shoyer have carried the ball once for negative yardage. Scales for minus four and Shoyer for minus one. Just two catches for the Cowboy for the uh, Cleburne receiving core, and that's Malachi Cunningham, two catches for 13 yards. As Shields was two of 11 passing. And just one pass caught by a Waco Lion. That was by King Townsend for 14 yards. So that's pretty much your first half stats. Waco High just needs to run as much clock as they can when they have the football, right, Hal? They took great advantage of the uh, turnovers gifted to them in the first half. Here's a second half kickoff. It's popped up on the far side and taken in there by the Waco Lions at the 45 yard line. So they're going to have some pretty good field position to start off. Xavier Davis, number 49, capturing that onside attempt by Cleburne. Sets up Waco High in great field position here to start the second half. Once again, Waco High's offense being led tonight by Reggie Lewis as LZ Amos and Mason Smith welcome in the backfield. His wide receivers, Chris Dowdy, Dwayne Simmons, King Townsend, and Robert Wireman. On the offensive line, Luke Grant's the center. The guards are DeAndre Smith and Kelvin Young. The tackles, Dante Ward and Rayshon Connor. Handoff goes to Amos. He goes over the left side and he's across into Cleburne territory. Well, he's brought down at about the 47 yard line. Brought down by Nunez, number 11. Pickup of eight on the play. Comes up a second down and short. Eight yard pickup, the most by Amos. He's done that twice tonight. He did that on his touchdown run earlier, and he's going to get a bunch more here as he takes it down near the 35 yard line. Now we have a flag thrown in all the way from the back judge. That may be a face mask somewhere in that pile. I think that's what exactly it's going to be. That's going to be the biggest penalty of the night against the Yellow Jackets, 15-yarder. Yeah, add on to the 12-yard run. It's 27 yards in one play. Kind of like that. Amos picks up 12 in the first down. Moves it down to the Cleburne 21 yard line. 34 yards so far of offense here, early here in the second half. Come to the line of scrimmage with a two tight end formation. Once again, it's Amos straight ahead, just following the blocks of that offensive line and takes it to the 16 for a gain of five. Looked like that might have been Mason Smith welcome, Lark, on that. Yeah, Amos, I mean, Amos just came up for a breather. Okay. We'll put that on his ledger. Five yard pickup. Second time he's had that many yards on a carry. Down to the 16. Smith welcome, trying to get around the corner, able to do so. Down to the 10, to the five, and brought down when he gets down to about the four yard line. The first and goal for Waco High. After the pickup of 12 by Mason Smith, welcome. Really good run there by Mason Smith. 
he was really deep in the uh, backfield, like seven yards deep before Reggie had to really stretch to get it to him on that particular run. He comes to the sideline, and LZ Amos takes over at the running back spot. Has a couple of blocking backs in front of him, and now we have a whistle. This is the same, same group of people that was in in the first half, and for whatever reason, they are having difficulty executing a uh, executing the play for some reason. They got Diaz and Darren Paul in in the backfield. Well, it's something we haven't seen before. At we, least I haven't seen before. No, I haven't seen it either all year. This is some new package they put in during the uh, two-week off time. It's first and goal down from the nine. Townsend, the wide receiver to the bottom of the screen. And once again, show that heavy backfield. Hand off to Amos, and somebody missed the block somewhere because somebody got to him before he got to the 10-yard line. He's going to lose one. Yeah, the stud linebacker, 24, Chris Mayer. Just blew that play up. Time to go to the drawing board and try something else as Simmons and Townsend both check into the huddle. Play clock at 10 as they break the huddle. This will work from under center. And we have motion on the right side. That'll mark it back another five yards. Jonathan Jackson shot off a little too early there in the line. Sixth penalty against Waco High for 40 yards on the night. Now they bring in Townsend and Simmons as the wide receivers. Stack three receivers to the right side of the formation. Wireman by himself on the far side, but Reggie Lewis is going to try to look for a place to run, and there's nowhere to hide. And he dropped back at the 17-yard line. Nunez, number 11, in on the tackle. Just wasn't any hole there, Lark. Brings up third and goal back at the 17. Negative yardage is not what Reggie Lewis is used to. He's going to take the snap, go around, follow a block from Amos. But his shirt tailed down at the 18-yard line. Getting over there to bring him down is James Reynolds. Nice open field tackle by Reynolds there. So the Cleburne defense comes up big here. After Waco High got it down to the four, a couple of penalties moved them back, and then the defense moved them back either further. So there's going to be a 35-yard field goal attempt by Tyler Black. He missed earlier from about 34. It was wide right with that one. Amos the snapper, Lewis the holder. He has trouble handling the snap. We'll pick it up and run with it around the right side. Side steps one would-be tackler, stays on his feet, gets it down to the 10-yard line, but he had to get into the end zone. So the ball will go over on downs after the eight-yard pickup by Lewis on fourth down. Well, just had difficulty on the snap. It came back to him on the ground. He just couldn't quite handle it. It's a big ask of a holder when the ball's not snapped perfectly to him. It's a nice yardage out of it, though, but Cleburne Escapes that field goal attempt now takes over first and 10 on their own 10 yard line. Waco Hick kept the ball for four minutes and 54 seconds to start the third quarter. Got one first down out of the deal, but no points. Pass out in the right flat, gets it out to Cunningham. He gets it up to the. That one was incomplete. Yes, he right. finally he dropped it. It looked like he had it for a second, but it popped out in front of his hands. O'Shawn Neal defending. Landry Shields was two of his first four, but has now missed the next eight. Ivan Diaz. Javon Bryant and Michael Moore in on the defensive line for Waco here. 
Handoff goes to Wells, gets a nice block. Takes it up to about the 13 yard line. Tim Stanifer, 18, corralling him. They bring up a third down and seven at the 13. 12th carry of the night for Wells for 24 yards. Two yards of pop isn't going to get it. No, Waco High has been really stifling uh, on the run defense tonight for sure. Looking to pass to the right, throws it to Wells in the flat, and it goes through his hands incomplete. We've got a flag here late after the pass was, uh, after the quarterback threw, so we'll have to see if it's going to be uh, roughing the passer or not. Yep, roughing, roughing the passer is the call. Not That's a, good... a costly penalty there because they had him set up to have to punt the ball. I'll take it out to the 28-yard line. Seventh penalty against Waco High for 55 yards. So Cleveland with a fresh set of downs. Take the handoff. Look to the right side, throws and complete this time. Gets it out to Schroyer. And it's good for the first down out to the 42. Nice execution on that pass play. He was wide open right there in the seam. Now they're going to go with a little faster motion now, Lark. Hand it off to Wells. And, you know, He's Bump knocked down ahead. by the linebacker, Darren Paul, 44. Wells gets four out of that, brings up a second down and six. We got another flag on the near side, a procedure call against the Yellow Jackets. It's the fourth time they've been penalized for 32 yards, but it moves it back to the 41-yard line. And second down at 11. Looking to pass, rolling right. Shields looking for an open man, fires one, and it's complete to Schroyer. He has it down to the 36-yard line. That was the Amos on the tackle after Rashad Lee uh, missed him as he went for the shoulder. He should have gone down for his legs there to bring him down. Once again, looking to pass. Has a man open across the middle. That's Cunningham. He has it down to the 20. Actually, that was Reynolds who made the catch. Amos, LZ Amos in on the tackle there. They're just sitting down and throwing that ball about 15 yards right, right in the middle of that soft zone. Once again, back to pass under a pressure, throws off his back foot, bumps it up for grabs, and it's incomplete. Trying to get that one to Cunningham. Great defense by the safety, Isaiah Livingston. Cleburne, after getting that uh, roughing the passer penalty on third down deep in their own field, has seemed to have gotten a second life here all of a sudden. Definitely finally found the passing game a little. Well, they tried to hand it off to Wells, but Shields decided to keep it and then slides forward. He started to slide at the 20. There's no gain on the play. He's up third down and 10 from the 20. Ivan Diaz, Darren Bible, and Javon Bryant in on the defensive line for Waco. Stanifer, Amos, Paul, and Neil are the linebackers here on this series. 
Again, back to pass, looking to the corner of the end zone, and it's going to be a little too far for Shoyer to get to. We've got a flag down on the uh, three-yard line. I'm sure it's going to be holding on Waco High. Looks like the guilty part is going to be number eight, Tyrone Sumter. Uh, you'd rather give up a holding penalty than a touchdown. It gives the Yellow Jackets a first down. At the Waco High 10. On the jet sweep, hands it off. Getting around the corner is Cunningham, and Cunningham's going to be knocked out of bounds when he gets to the six. Yeah, Rashad Lee finally forcing him out of bounds. Javion Moore coming in at game number 19. He's up second and goal. Eleventh play of the drive, biggest drive for play-wise for either team in the game. Shields the throw across the middle and it's complete for the touchdown. Gets it to Shoyer. Just a well-executed play there. A little cut in right at the goal line. Sumter was all over him as a defender, but pass was perfectly placed. No way you could stop that pass. Ten plays, 90 yards. They got more yards on that drive than they had in the entire first half. That's correct. On to try the PAT. Anthony Taranis. And it is good. Three minutes, 35 seconds left to go third quarter. We have a new score. It's Waco High 15 and Cleburne 7. Well executed offensive series there by Cleburne after being gifted a uh, roughing the passer on a third down on the 10 yard line. Waco High had also a holding penalty, so roughly 25 yards in penalties, aiding that offensive series there for Cleburne. But now we're down to a one score game now. Both teams have only had the ball one, one possession here in the second half. Picked up five first downs in that drive. They only had one in the entire first half. Angel Campos, 21 on the far side for Waco. Reggie Lewis, number one here on the near side. Both parked on about their 15-yard line, waiting for the kick from yeah. Anthony Turras. Somebody poked the Yellow Jackets' nest at halftime, didn't they? They have a lot more spark to them here in the second half. Ensuing kickoff comes down to the 30-yard line. Trying to get Irwin. away from the pursuit is Irvin. And he gets it up to about the 28. See if the Waco offense can get a spark here and get a drive going. This is actually their worst starting field position of the evening, if you can believe that. I can. They were gifted field position several times in the first half. Drives of, what, four and six yards total for two touchdowns. Reggie Lewis under center with a two with a tight end to the right of the formation. Hands it back to Smith Welcome and he's into the secondary and takes it out to about the 44 yard line. Pick up of 16 on the play. Ashton Huey for Cleburne in on the tackle. Quickly to the line of scrimmage. Lewis from under center, same play, hands it off to Smith Welcome, has some running room bounces off of a teammate blocking and takes it up to the 49 yard line. Pick up a five for Mason Smith. Welcome. Jaden Rodriguez in on the tackle. We're seeing a new offensive uh, formation here for Waco High right now with Lewis under the center and the running back about seven yards deep. We really haven't seen this kind of uh, formation all year, best I remember. They mark it at the 48, which makes it a four-yard gain, second down and six. And off to LZ Amos. He goes straight up the middle and will only get maybe to the 50-yard line before he's brought down. That guy's got to be tired. 
Yeah, he's been playing both ways all night. 24 again, their linebacker, Chris Mayer, in on the tackle. Clock rolling with 2.05 left to go in the third quarter. Waco High looking to answer the points put on the board in the quarter by the Yellow Jackets. Wireman and Dowdy go wide to the left side. Lewis under center will take the ball straight up the middle and won't get a whole lot out of it. Fights his way up to the 47-yard line. Now we have a flag at the end of the play coming from the field judge on the near side. That could be on 23, Marcus Juarez, who just made that tackle. Uh-oh, Reggie is limping off right now. That's not good. That means Mason Smith welcomes going to be our quarterback now. Brad Strickland tells us unsportsmanlike conduct against Cleburne. So Reggie got about three yards out of the play, but then they got the 15 to pick up the first and 10 in Cleveland territory at the 33-yard line. All right, so we're either going to have LZ Amos or we're going to have Mason Smith welcome as the quarterback. Out of the shotgun, it's going to be Mason Smith welcome taking the snap, handing it off to Amos. And LZ gets it across the 30 to the 29. Pick up a four on the play. Mayor in on the tackle. What was that's about the sixth different person who has taken a snap from center for the it, Waco Lions this year? It is this year, yes. Then a revolving door quarterback and not exactly what Lyndon Helt wanted to see. Again, it's Mason Smith welcome out of the Wildcat, basically takes it and follows the block of Amos across the 25 to the 24 for a five-yard pickup. Brought down by our number 66, Ray Cuellar. Ball just across the 25-yard line. Third and yard and a half for the Waco High offense. 28 seconds and counting here in the third quarter. Wireman goes wide to the far side, Dowdy wide to the near side, a two tight end formation. And off to Amos, he tries to bounce it outside, gets away from one would-be tackler and takes it down to the 15-yard line. Nice run there by LZ Amos. That was just some sheer power running there. Picked up nine on the play and will run off the last seconds of the third quarter. So our score as we head to the final 12 minutes is Waco High 15 and Cleburne 7. Like to thank our production crew from Leaping Lions Productions for all their work this year on Waco High football. That includes America Archon on replay, Brianna Acevedo on the switcher, Chris Chapman taking care of audio tonight, Jaden White on camera one, Josh Pena on camera two, or on camera two, yeah, we go. All under the direction of Will Burney. Thank you, guys and gals. We appreciate the job you do. Well, Waco High started this drive on their own 28-yard line with three minutes and 26 seconds to go here in the third quarter. Methodically have taken it down the field, aided by one 15-yard unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. But Reggie Lewis going out uh, definitely hurts Waco High because they're having to use Mason Smith Welcome, who's normally one of their running backs, as a quarterback. And like Lark mentioned earlier, this is the sixth different quarterback they've used this year. I got to think if the locker rooms have an offensive room and a defensive room, the offensive room in both locker rooms probably has no paint left on the walls. <laughs> <laughs> I got the feeling those coaching staffs wore out the offense, said you got to move the football. That's what they've both done here. Now Mason Smith welcome though is wrapped up as he gets back to the line of scrimmage. 66 Quayar in on the tackle. Second down and 10. You got to believe, at least Cleburne's got to believe, that Waco High is not going to throw the football right now because 
you got to believe they've got their ears pinned back for the running game. So that's when your offensive line has to dig in and make some holes. Got to follow the block of Amos around the left side. Gets it near the 10-yard line. Some good power running by Mason Smith. Welcome there. A mark him at the 11 after the four-yard pickup. Brings up a third down and six. As John Madden used to say, get behind the big uglies and push. Play sent in with about 10 seconds left on the play clock. Going again with the two tight end formation. Smith welcome drops the football, and I think he was able to at least get back on top of it. There's a scramble at the bottom of the pile for possession. Smith welcome fighting two Yellow Jackets for the football and is able to retain possession, but the loss is going to be back to the 16-yard line. Good recovery by Mason Smith welcome. It's going to send out the field goal kicker, though, Tyler Black. See if they can grab three points here and make it a two-score game. Well, he's had a couple of attempts tonight go awry, both because of maybe some snap problems. As Reggie Lewis had some problems. This is going to be from 34 yards. We've got a Myas Irwin is going to be the holder instead of Reggie Lewis. He's able to get the snap, but he gets it down a little late, and it's going to be short. They're going to, they roughed the kicker, though, Lark. They just threw the flag right where Tyler Black. Well, that'll give Waco High a new life. The personal foul going to be a half yard or half the distance to the goal. Cleveland coaches are contesting that the ball was tipped at the line of scrimmage. I can tell you, I'm looking through my binoculars, it was just hit bad. It was just hit bad. The snap came back, but it, it, Amias, he hadn't held one all year as far as being a holder. He didn't get the ball down quite quick enough. Kind of knocked the rhythm off for Tyler Black, to be honest with you. Uh, first and goal from the eight-yard line for Waco High as they get new life here thanks to a couple of penalties in this drive. Townsend, the lone receiver to the far right. Got Reggie Lewis back in at the quarterback spot, gives it off to LZ Amos, and he's going to take it into the end zone from eight yards out for a touchdown. His second eight-yard run for six tonight. Just some good, solid power running by LZ Amos, and some nice holes were opened up by the left side of that offensive line. And it's good to see Reggie Lewis back in the game. Maybe he just got nicked up just minorly, and he's, he's back in the game, and that, that's big. That makes it 21 to 7. Point after attempt. Wait do you see if they're going to, it looks like they're going to go for two. So I don't see Tyler Black out on the field. Well, they got hit on that extra point attempt. And I don't know if he was hurt. Lewis going to work from under center. Hands it to Amos. He's got a hole and is into the end zone for the two-point conversion. Nice play there by Waco High. You know, Waco High, with Reggie being underneath the center and running the ball, they've had some really good success with that this evening. They have. Runs the score to 23-7 to in favor of Waco High with 9.37 left to go in the game. Well, it'll take two touchdowns by Cleburne and two two-point conversions just to tie this ball game. Five minutes and 58 seconds on that 11-play drive that went 72 yards for the touchdown. So each team able to put together a long drive here in the second half, which neither team was able to do in the first half. Cleburne's had the ball one time here in the second half. Wake Ohio, two possessions. But yes, more offense here by both teams in the second half than one drive and combined it in the whole first half. 
Well, Tyler Black's back to kick off. Again, got a breeze of about 10 to 15 miles per hour that he's kicking into. And so you I got don't Reynolds there deep on the far side on the 10 yard line. And I don't expect to see him kick it much past the 20. He attempted an onside kick earlier the, tonight. He makes the approach and kicks it deep this time. Going to get all the way down inside the 10 yard line. Coming to the near side with it is Cunningham. Stays on his feet and finally bumped out of bounds before he gets to the 45 yard line. Good job of staying on his feet by Cunningham. Really was. Waco High, for whatever reason, didn't want to lay the wood on him there, and he just kept bouncing, bouncing and bouncing until he finally got knocked out. So a good return by Malachi Cunningham. Brings the ball up to the 43-yard line. Landry Shields, the senior quarterback, six foot 205, has gone the distance with Wells, is running back in the backfield, going to look to throw. Throws to Wells in the left flat. Wells is going to be brought down by LG, LZ Amos after a gain of two. LZ Amos, one of the players having to go both ways for Waco High. He's going to sleep good tonight. He will. He will. He'll sleep real good tonight. Very talented athlete, 6'2", about 215 pounds. He's a junior. Well, nice, be nice to have him back next year for the Lions. Second down and eight. Shields looking to his right, goes back to the left, throws it up for grabs for Malachi Cunningham, and it's out of bounds. The closest defender was Rashad Lee. Darren Paul putting tremendous pressure on him. He had to let go of that ball way earlier than he wanted to. Shields had trouble completing passes in the first half, but completed three in a row during that last drive. They got points on the board for the Yellow Jackets. You've got to wonder with 8.45 left in the game if this is going to be a two plays to get the next eight yards. Shields drops back, rolls right. Pressure from Fumble. behind and brought down. The ball is loose, and Waco High is on top of it. Amias Irwin came from the safety position and just flat out knocked it out of his hands. He never saw him coming, and then he also recovered the fumble. Big turnover for Waco High. 8.36 left to go in the contest. Waco High with a 23-7 lead, trying to add to it as they get the ball in Cleveland territory at the Yellow Jacket 39-yard line. Uh, normally, this is where an offensive coordinator wants to go for the juggler, looks for something deep. But again, the, the Lions on their fourth quarterback of the year, as far as a starter goes, not necessarily a passing quarterback. We'll hand the ball off to Mason Smith. Welcome, and he is submarine before he can get going. I believe that was Malachi Cunningham in the backfield quickly. Eight yard loss. LZ Amos is back in the game at running back. Loss all the way back to the 47. Second down and 18. Cleburne also has a, several players going both ways tonight. Tight end to the left of the formation. Amos gets the handoff going to the right and cuts it back into the middle. And we'll get it down to about the 41 yard line. Pick up a six. Number 11, holding on for dear life to tackle Amos with Brian Nunes. Brings up a third down and 12. But more importantly, they're keeping it between the hash marks and the clock continues to roll. This will be under seven and a half minutes left to go in the game when they snap the ball. I would imagine they're going to continue to keep it on the ground, get, keep that clock moving. Coaching staff waiting till about 15 seconds is left on the play clock before they 
center signal in the play. Lewis looking to pass, has a man, but it's going to be intercepted. Trying to get that out to Wireman, but coming up with the INT is Ashton Huey. Second time that quarterback has been intercepted tonight for Waco High. A little surprised they tried to actually throw that football, to be honest with you. Deep in the uh, possession of uh, Cleburne. Thought a run and then maybe a punt. Pin them way back. Well, they get the ball with 7.09 to go, trailing Waco High 23-7 to with 7.09 left to play in the fourth quarter at their own 25-yard line. Shields will hand it off to Wells on the flea flicker. He pitches it back and going to be stopped immediately as Malachi Cunningham had nowhere to run because the Maya, well, no, that's not a Maya serving, that's 18. Who was that? Tim Stanifer. Ah, he Stanifer. wasn't fooled at all on that play. No, he wasn't. Looked like they were going to try to a flea flicker pass. Exactly, and, and Stanford got in the way. Certainly did, all the way back to the 15-yard line. That's a loss of 10 on the play. Shields with the pass. It's deflected and almost intercepted, but dropped. Almost coming up with the interception was Livingston. Let's see if they give us a replay of who tipped that ball. Well, I'm not sure he wasn't past the line of scrimmage when he oh, threw it. Oh, it was a receiver rental. I mean, receiver number two, it just went through his hands. Okay. Third down and 20 at the Cleveland 15. Again, passing is not something either one of these teams wants to do. A high snap has the quarterback just throwing the football and getting rid of it, looking for the screen pass to Wells. Tyrone yeah. Sumter putting on tremendous pressure. Of course, after the quarterback partially missed that ball, that threw the whole play off. Yeah, Wells a little angry at his offensive lineman, not knowing that his quarterback was having difficult coming up with the football in the backfield. So Waco High defense comes up with a big stop here. There's a negative 10 yards on that possession. Reggie Lewis waits at the 45 in his end of the field for the punt. Good step, gets the punt away, but off the side of the foot and gonna go out of bounds at the 44 yard line in Cleveland's end of the field. So another, once again, good field position for Waco High. 30 yard punt, Lark. Six minutes and 11 seconds left in the contest. Waco High looking to add to a 23 to seven advantage. Looking for their second win of the year. Looking to go into the last week of the season with a record of two and seven and pick up their first district win. Looking for a one and six district mark as they will take on the final team, and Smith Welcome gets the ball and will lose a yard on the play. Marcus Juarez, number 23, wrapping him up right at the line of scrimmage. Waco High finishes off against Colleen next week. At Colleen. No need to be in any hurry calling the offense now. Drain the yeah. clock all the way down to under five before time you snap is, it. Time is on your side. Out of the shotgun. Lewis will keep the ball, gets around the right side momentarily. There's a flag thrown. I got to believe that may be a holding penalty to go high or maybe a legal use of hand. But Lewis could not get the corner turn. Now here's Brad Strickland to tell us about the. Yeah, it is holding against Waco High. Brings up second and 21 and moves it back to Waco territory at the Lions 45 yard line. Well, after both teams had promising drives in the third quarter, both of them have gone backward here in the fourth. 
Looked in a little tougher sledding. LZ Amos is back in uh, at the running back position, Lark. And each one of these offenses looking for a big play. Both defenses had avoided the big play so far tonight. Townsend, the lone receiver to the right. Amos takes the handoff, trying to get around the left side. At least gets it across midfield before he's knocked out at the 49-yard line after a pickup of five on the play. James Reynolds knocking him out of bounds. But it's third and 16 at the Cleveland 49. Running out of bounds, stops the clock with 519 left to play. Dowdy and Townsend go wide to the far side. Wireman wide to the near side. Hand off to Amos. Cuts it back inside and has an opening up the middle of the field. Gets a block from Wireman down the field and takes it down to the inside the 25-yard line and a first down before he's finally rushed out of bounds. Pushed out of bounds by the Reynolds. We do have a flag on the 25-yard line right here on the sideline. Somebody may have got a hand in the face of Amos as they were shoving him out of bounds. Flag thrown by the linesman. Brad Strickland will tell us. Face mask against Waco. 25 yard gain negated and then take another 10 yards. That's a big costly penalty there. If anything it does, it just allows the Lions to roll more clock. That's true. Move the ball back to the 40. Ends up being a nine yard net gain. And brings up third down and about five. Under center. And off goes to Smith. Welcome and he's gonna be wrapped up at the 29-yard line. Yeah, well, 19 on the tackle. And that was Amos with the ball. Pardon me. Jaden Rodriguez on the tackle for Cleburne, number 19. Waco High is going to punt the ball away. And they got it fourth and four at the 39. Tyler Black in to do the punting. It's a good snap. Gets a line drive off toward the five yard line. It checks up and gonna be killed inside the five at about the three. Nice job by Tyler Black to get that one to check up. Kind of like, look, look like, like a nice nine iron nine, shot. Nine there. iron shot. 36 yards on the punt. Pinning Cleburne deep in their own side of the field at the three yard line. Well, this is where the Waco High defense has shined tonight. Inside the 10-yard line, they've been able to give the ball to the offense twice inside the five-yard line, and that's how the Lions got their first two scores of the game. After the defense was able to hold the Jackets inside the five and have some problems in the kicking game. Shields will work from out of his end zone with his running back, Jagan Wells. Wells, a junior at 5'9", 180. Has toted the mail most of the night for the Yellow Jackets. Shields looking to pass. It's complete out to about the 15-yard line to Royer. Schroyer gets, gets them out of the shadow of their own goal line. Number 10, Amias Irwin defending on that pass completion. Picked up 12 on the play. Back to the line of scrimmage quickly. Where you're again looking right and throws through the hands of Schwe uh, Shields, throws it through the hands of Schwarrier this time incomplete. Look like Schwarrier was trying to take off and run before he actually had it. Should have caught that ball, it's in his hands. Stops the clock with 428 left in the contest. Waco High holding on to a 23 to seven lead. Cleburne trying to pick up their only win of the year. 
Shields jumps up in the pocket now just throws one up for grabs and it's in the hands of Cunningham across the 40 to the 35 to the 32 yard line 33 yard line nice really, catch really, by yeah. Cunningham outstanding catch by Cunningham well that was just go long and I'll get it to you that's that big play that each team's been looking for and they come up with it here all the way down to the Waco High 33 That's 52 yards on the pitch and catch. That one's incomplete. That was intended for Reynolds. Threw it way over his head. Tyrone Sumter in on the defense. Waco High looking for a possible blitz here. Once again, throws off his back foot in deep, trying to get it to Schwarrier, and it's knocked away by Amias Irwin. Yeah, great, great effort by Amias Irwin. Got a hand in the face of the receiver and messed him up. Sumter yeah, that, was that, putting that is, a lot of heat on him there. Yeah, that, that is the definition of Hail Mary. I mean, it just putting up a prayer. Exactly. Hoping, hoping that. Hoping for the best. Here they go on third and 10. Now they'll change the play now with 13 seconds left on the play clock. The H-backs number 34, Xavier Aguilar. Been mostly used as a blocker tonight. Looking to step up in the pocket. Now throws off balance trying to get that to Reynolds and it's incomplete. They're in four down territory. They got to go for it. Absolutely. Tyrone Sumter, along with Tim Stanford, for putting a lot of heat on the quarterback. Got to get to the 23 yard line to pick up a new series of downs. Head coach Jim Woodard and his offensive brain trust trying to come up with a play that will at least get them 10 yards, if not more. Two receivers left, one right. Shields throws across the middle, and it's complete. Has the first down and more. Cunningham is loose, headed for the end zone, and he's into the end zone for the touchdown. Malachi Cunningham gets the touchdown on fourth and 10 from 33 yards out. Just a nice play over the middle. About a 15-yard pass reception, another 20 on the run. And they have to go for two here, down 16. That drive started at the three-yard three yard line. line. Big play in it was the 52-yard pass to Cunningham. They finished off with a 33-yard pass to Cunningham. Still got 18 seconds left on the play clock to decide as to how to go about this two-point conversion. Shields waits for Reynolds to come join him in the backfield. Will roll to his left. Throws into the corner, and it's a little too hot for Schroeder to come down with, so the two-point conversion is no good, and Waco High holds on to a 10-point lead at 23-13 to with 3.46 left to go in the game. Good defensive effort there on that two-point conversion by Waco High. They were putting some more pressure on them. They've been shooting linebackers on that whole drive, trying to speed up the quarterback. So Cleburne, who had trouble in the first half getting any offense going, had less than 100 yards offense in that first half. Able to go 97 yards in seven plays in a minute and six seconds. To score on the 33-yard touchdown pass from Shields to Cunningham. They had 85 yards of passing in that drive out of the 97. Yep, two passes over 30 yards. One over 50, one over 30. As Yogi says, it ain't over till it's over. 10-point ball game. It is a two-score game. Waco you got to imagine they're going to try an onside kick here. You would think so. So the good hands team will be out there for Waco High when you see Reggie Lewis up front along with several other low numbers, Chris Dowdy, Tyler Black, Tyrone Sumner. 
Got the good hands team up front looking for the onside kick. Nobody deeper than the 40-yard line. Here's the try. It's a line drive right into the gut of Dowdy at the 50-yard line. And Dowdy's able to corral it and hold on to it. Okay, great field position for Waco High now, starting from their 50-yard line. And I have to apologize to Dwayne Simmons. I've been calling him Dowdy all night. 15 and 16 look quite a bit like him. <laughs> They're a little difficult to differentiate, but way up here. Well, that was Simmons with the catch. Waco High looking to burn 346 off the third quarter clock. Cleburne has its full complement of timeouts. That was a slow developing play. Looked like kind of a pop-up on the snap to Lewis and the handoff to Amos. Amos just kind of took it, took his time getting him back to the line of scrimmage. Yeah, Chris Mayer, 24 with the with the tackle. You're right. The uh, snap back to uh, Reggie was. A little floater. Cleveland's taking their uh, first time out of the second half. But up by 10 with 3.40 to go. I would run all the clock I can. If you can get a first down, fine. If not, punt it down there and pin them deep again. Again, Waco High will close out the season at Colleen next week. Looking to go over there with a record of two and seven and one and six in district play. Cleburne Yellow Jackets, the clock is slowly running out on their chance to get at least one win on the 2022 season. So they came in 0 and 9 and 0 and 7 in league play. A new number in the backfield is Noah Stinnett has checked in as a blocking back. Pitch goes to Amos, has a little trouble bringing it in, but doesn't have any trouble running it downfield, staying on his feet, and finally gets free, but the whistle is already blown after he got it down to the 36-yard line, a gain of 14 on the play. James Reynolds and Chris Mayer pushing him out. LZ is just a tough runner. He's kind of come out and get a breather. He's played both ways. He's played nearly the whole ball game for Waco High. Don't think they had to call a timeout here as the play went out of bounds. Clock stopped with 3.30 left to go. Lewis under center. Hands it off to Mason Smith. Welcome. He's able to slide across the 35 down to about the 33. Brought down by Nunez, number 11. Second timeout called by Cleburne. You know, Waco is really being affected tonight when Reggie is underneath the center and they're handing that ball off deep seven yards to either Amos or Mason Smith welcome and giving them a chance to pick a hole if there is one. It's been very effective. Best rushing attack I've seen them this year. Well, head coach... Lyndon Helt and his offensive squad have pretty much had to keep it as simple as possible this year simply because of the revolving door at quarterback due to injuries. Out of the shotgun now. They'll send Simmons in motion. Lewis holds on to the ball and he is smothered by white shirts before he can go anywhere. Xavier Aguilar, number 34, wrapping him up. Loss is going to be back to the 38-yard line, a loss of five on the play, and that will burn Cleburne's last time out with 3.19 to go. That's third and 12 way, facing Waco High at the 38-yard line. Basically, you pick up a couple of first downs and call it a night, the party's over. That's right. They, they, they're able to collect that couple first downs the game is over for sure 
that first first down is going to be a little difficult as you got to have 12 yards to do so. Got to get to the 25 yard line. I think I'm going to run the football and if we don't make it, then just punt it on down a little bit further. Pooch it down there inside the 10 if you can. Or you can run a fourth down play too. Chew up some more clock that way. Straight T backfield, hands off to Amos and he's Brought down before he gets to the 40-yard line. Going to be another loss on the play. Number 11, Nunez again with the tackle. Brings up fourth down and 14. At the 40. And, yes, Tyler Black is going to be in to punt the ball away. And will do so with under 2.30 left to go in the contest. Now, I might take a penalty here and just let that clock go all the way out. That sounds Time like clock. a real good idea to me. You know, snap the ball, though, with 10 seconds left on the play clock. Gets the punt off. It's fumbled Bumble. around. Waco High has a chance to get on the football, and it's picked up by Waco High. Rashad Lee's got the ball. He certainly does at the five-yard line. That was a knuckleball coming right at the How do you receiver. Do that? I don't even know why he even tried to catch it. That Rashad Lee comes up with it at the nine-yard line. So Waco High gets new life here with 2.34. After the fumble punt, they're at the eight. Kicking game has been the bane for Cleburne tonight. Hand off to Amos. He gets it inside the five to the four. Number 11 again, Nunes. Cleveland, he has made a lot of tackles along with the linebacker, number 24, Chris Mayer. Got to be good in all three phases, offense, defense, and special teams, and special teams has not done the Cleveland Yellow Jackets well tonight. Waco coaching staff letting the, play, the game clock run down before they signal in the play as we'll be under two minutes with this snap. Lewis on the handoff to Amos. LZ will get it back to the line of scrimmage, and that's about it. Good defense there by Cleburne on that particular play. They're selling out. They know Waco High is going to try to run the ball. Giving a loss of one back to the five. It'll be third down and goal from the five-yard line. Be under a minute. After they snap this ball, so. Mason Smith welcome is back in the backfield. This is where you tell Reggie to just run around for a while. Exactly. Run backward for about 60 yards. Now we got a whistle at the snap. Delay game. Off Five yards. Third down. Michael apparently let the play clock run out. So third and goal back at the 10-yard line. Take at least 26 seconds on this play and you won't have to snap another one. Lewis waiting for things to develop in the backfield. Now we'll just fall down at about the seven yard line. Multiple flags all on the five yard line. Three different officials through the flags. Make that four. four. There was another one dropped at the very last second. Laundry everywhere. Yeah, penalty was on Mason Smith. Welcome. It's one thing you don't need is to have a penalty. It stops the clock. Pushing the back. They'll decline the penalty, so it'll be fourth down. Fourth and goal at the six. They're going to come in and try a uh, field goal. Well, 
I'll give Tyler Black and his holder one more chance. It'll be Reggie Lewis, the holder this time. They've had three field goal attempts go awry tonight. This one from 28 yards is partially blocked. Cleveland comes up with it at the two yard at the one yard line. Well, special teams having trouble tonight. That one just pops straight up in the air. Looks like. Nice job, though, by Javon Bryant to make sure that didn't go any further. So the 28-yard field goal attempt ends up being basically a punt down to the one-yard line. 49 seconds is what Cleburne has left, trailing by 10. And they have to work from out of their end zone. Got to believe that their quarterback, Landry Shields, is going to throw up a couple of more prayers. Yeah, Waco High's got five defenders 20 yards off the line of scrimmage. He's had several prayers answered tonight. This one he throws in the flat to Reynolds. He gets away from a couple of tacklers and then finally brought down. And then we have a late flag thrown. Darren Paul with the tackle, 44. Apparently somebody got a hold of a face mask in there. And that 15-yard penalty will give Cleburne a little bit of operating room with 40 seconds left to play. Takes the ball out all the way out to the 29-yard line. Ends up being a 33-yard positive play. One to the right. Wells in the backfield with Shields. Shields goes to the sideline, far sideline with the throw, gets it off to Malachi Cunningham, and Cunningham will run out of bounds when he gets to the 49-yard line. 32 seconds left on the clock. Yellow Jackets in the two-minute drill. Yeah, in the two-minute drill, right. Waco playing real soft here on defense. Got three safeties that are 20 yards deep. That's the one thing I always said about the prevent defense. It prevents you from winning. You've held them from scoring just 13 points up to this point with a normal defense. Now you go into the prevent. Throw is off the hands of Malachi Cunningham. Darren Bible with a hand right in the face of the quarterback. I understand the philosophy of playing deep, but that just opens up the soft zone up the middle and lets them as Hank Schramm would say, matriculate down the field. Offense looking to take what they're given. Shields looks to his left, overthrows Schroyer. Now 23 seconds left. Tim Standifer defending on that pass play. Third and 10 from midfield. Lion defense just showing a three-man rush. Gives Shields plenty of time to throw. And out pattern on the near side to Reynolds is incomplete. Brings up fourth and 10 with 17 seconds left. Tyrone Sumner defending on that play. No timeouts left for Cleburne. 17 seconds left. They may have a chance to throw something across the middle to at least get a new series of downs. Looking for the sideline throw, though. Gets it off to Schroyer. Got the first down at the Waco High 38-yard line. Clock Knocked stopped as they moved the change with 12 seconds to go. Knocked down by Myas Irwin. Now the clock back in motion, and they... Spike the ball to stop the clock with seven seconds. So one more chance for Cleburne. They had a 33-yard prayer for a touchdown earlier in the half. 
Well, you might as well go for the, the home run here. There's no reason to throw a 10-yard pass when you can throw it into the end zone. Time to take a bite on the whole enchilada here. Drops back. Flags thrown. A procedure call against the Yellow Jackets. Two seconds rolled off the clock. Reynolds, the intended receiver, got the early start. Moves it back to the 41. Or actually the 42. Got LZ Amos on the 20-yard line. Isaiah Levingstone and Rashad Lee are on about the 24-yard line. Last play of the year for the Cleveland Yellow Jackets. Shields drop back, rolls right, stops, just throws up a prayer. Plenty of Waco Lions there. It's batted around and knocked down in the end zone. I believe Amaya Serwin is the guy who got a hold of it and knocked it down, and that's going to do it. The final seconds have clicked off the clock, and the Waco Lions are going to go to 2-7 and seven on the year and pick up their first win in district play with a 23-13 victory over the Cleveland Yellow Jackets. The Yellow Jackets will end their season as they have the open date next week. Winless this year, 0-10 and 0-8 and and in district action. That'll do it from Waco ISD Stadium. Many thanks to my broadcast partner, Hal Harris, I'm Lark Smith. This has been a production of Leaping Lions Productions.